Good morning, everybody. Chip Walton, social media manager for Summit Brewing Company here with head brewer Damian McCann, a.k.a. Damo. We are here to talk to Chip. Yeah, it's locked. We're here to talk about Rebellion Stout, the second release in our Union series. And for the occasion, Damien, for this coal black beer, I wore my coal black shirt. Yeah, as black as a Welsh coal miner's Wellington boot. <laughs> so I've described it. Real quick, remind people what the mission statement is for the Union series. Well, uh, the Union program really seeks to combine new and obscure ingredients that have only recently become available to brewers um, with some fairly traditional uh, styles and uh, uh, fairly traditional brewing techniques. Um, so with, with this beer here, with Rebellion, um, we sourced the, the, uh, the hop variety Bodicea uh, first and then we also found our malts and uh, tried to bring it all together into a, a fairly coherent mm -hmm. um, beer, um, which in this case is an export double style. 8.5% coal black, beautiful beer. Uh, kind of real quick tasting notes that you that you get from the young product. Yeah, there's no doubt it, it'll it'll change over time. Uh, we package it with a small amount of yeast and suspension, so uh, this beer is really designed to age well in the bottle and in the keg. It's got a lot of hop character right now. We fairly aggressively dry hopped um, this stout. Uh, it's based on an older recipe from uh, the late 1800s, and back then they were really aggressively hopping those export stouts. Um, just as we think of IPAs heading for um, the Indian subcontinent from, from the UK, we think of those as being really heavily hopped. A lot of these British and Irish brewers were also really heavily hopping their, their export stouts. So I get a lot of um, resiny, uh, spicy hop on the nose. Uh, I get some of that uh, mocha coffee character coming through. There's a wee bit of uh, roasted um, pearl barley from Chile in there. So I get a little bit of that mocha character. Um, also some dark fruit. There's a little bit of yeast character in there, but it's, it, to me it's, it's all about uh, those kind of uh, roasted notes and that kind of spicy resiny hop, hop character. Plenty of bitterness, um, actually fairly dry. The, the beer really, really attenuated dry. well, yeah. yeah we were talking about that the other day and I think that's going to play out well as well as it ages. Right now it's bitter and dry, but I think a year from now it'll be dry and smooth mm -hmm. and the malt is gonna, it's gonna be a little more chocolatey, right? Correct, yeah. It'll be a bit more rounded in flavor. Those malt characters will start to come through, the hop character will diminish a wee bit. But I really wanted people to understand that these were assertive beers. These were aggressively hopped, they were bitter, they were acidic, um, they had an awful lot of flavor. Um, they were designed to hold up for a long period of time because they were export beers. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how this beer matures and develops in the package. Right now, it's got a lot of flavor. I think it'll mellow out more with time. And uh, I think some people will really enjoy that. I think more people will, will prefer drinking it fresh and, and uh, pretty young. Explain the mashing process. This was actually a really interesting concept that you involved here. Right, we, we did a, 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 a black malt mash and a white malt mash. There's over 10,500 pounds of grain in one of these <laughs> brews. It's, it's an awful lot of malt. So much malt that we, we can't fit it into one of our mash tons. We had to use uh, both of our mash kettles. So uh, I decided I'll do a white malt mash in mash kettle one um, based around uh, super sex of that Irish stout malt from County Cork, that's the base malt in the beer. And then mash kettle two, I loaded by hand um, about uh, 1,500 pounds of, uh, of that, that uh, pearl barley, that roasted pearl barley from mm -hmm. Patagonia, and then some of the patent malt from Simpsons in Berry Cantuy. So we had two mashes going at once, mashed off the white malt mash in the letter tongue first, sent the black mash in on top of that, so we had a layered mash for quite a while as we were running off. So the first wort actually looked like a pale ale. Um, and by the time we got towards the end of the runoff, it was extremely black. So it took time for those, those two mashes to come together in the louder tongue. And our good friends at Brewer Supply Group kind of helped us line up these amazing malts. So props to them. Yeah, BSG sourced the, uh, the raw materials. Um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, they came to me and said, hey, we have a new 
stout base malt from County Cork mm-hmm. that's just um, recently been available for brewers to utilize. Um, we have this hot Odyssea, um, which only came out a few years back. Um, a really nice new dwarf hop from the UK. So they had some some kind of cool ingredients that had just really arrived on the scene here in the US and they said, hey, can you maybe apply them to your union program and, and come up with something fun? And it's weird, you're saying Americans didn't invent over hopping beer. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't blame the eggs for that. <laughs> The Brits and the Irish were doing it a long time ago. I, I, I've seen hopping rates for these beers at six, seven, eight pounds of parrel. Um, very, very heavily hop beers. Uh, you know, alpha acid for most hops back then was probably four to five percent. Uh, utilization would have been less than we get today in our modern brew houses. Mm-hmm. It was all whole cone hops, so again, that would have reduced utilization. So they, to get that bitterness, to get that hop character, they were using an awful lot of hops. So the Rebellion Stout, it's extremely limited. So get it while you can, and if you pick it up in bottle form, Damien and I certainly suggest trying to squirrel away a couple for a year from now. I, I think so. I mean, uh, the beer will just change and evolve with time. It's designed to uh, to cellar really well. Um, don't let really it get too warm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, try and keep it in your basement or something like that. But uh, I, I think it'd be really fun for, for people to put this beer away for a while, revisit it, um, you know, maybe take some notes um, and remind themselves of what it was like when it was fresh and, and how it evolves over time and, and how things change with time in the bottle. So. Yeah, put some away, hide it, okay. don't drink it all right now. Call your favorite bar and beer store, see if and when they're getting it. Look for the happenings tab on summitbrewing.com and look and see if you're gonna have an event in your area. Union 2, Rebellion Stout. Straight from the insane brain of this guy. <laughs> Slaunch y'all, thanks very much. Did you just say slaunch y'all? Like slaunch y'all. It's my kind of effort to be an American. <laughs> bring, bring two different cultures together. Does anyone in Europe say y'all? Does no, anybody... no, only the odd Texan that's living in the UK. <laughs> mm.